Our next speaker, um, she usually works in film and in fashion, but since graduating last summer from Cambridge, she's put a lot of her time into one particular project. It's called Impossible.com, and it's an ambitious alternative gift economy built on a social platform. It's not launched yet, it's due to launch at the end of the year, but we're going to learn more than anybody's known so far. Please welcome Lily Cole. Um, I like that I came on the tail end of the model joke, which I can hopefully be. <laughs> um, the, uh, the fact that I'm doing a speech at Wired is uh, very surreal to me. Um, technology was never something that I, to be honest, thought I was particularly interested in. Um, nor that I consider myself working in, but I had an idea two years ago that would sit on a tech, uh, technical platform, and so for the last year I've been endeavouring to try and build it, and I actually feel incredibly inspired um, to have been in this industry a little bit um, by the potential I see for technology to cause really big social change. Um, the idea I had, I was with a friend of mine, and um, we were on a plane, and um, the idea was really simple. You can, this is a landing page, but it communicates a tiny bit of it, which is simply saying, we all have skills, we all have services, and why is there not a platform which encourages us to do things for each other for free and makes it really easy to communicate those possibilities? And I looked into gift economies ever since for the last year, and it transpires there are really, I find really, I'm a very compelling and um, powerful possibility as a kind of alternative economy that can coexist with our own. Uh, they've worked in the past in a lot of kind of pre-capitalist societies and um, there's a lot of anthropological texts that study them. But our own, own current day, Wikipedia is a good example of an intellectual one, academic papers are good examples of them. And they say actually the amount of things that we do already for free for one another is bigger than the GDP if we were to put a monetary figure on it. Um, and I think the value that has been sh demonstrated by gift economies is that they create subtle relationships between the individuals who give. So imagine you've got a broken something in your house, you've got a broken shelf. Somebody comes by, they come and they fix it, you give them a cup of tea, you have a conversation and they leave, and there's no expectation of return. It's not quite barter even, it's not like an exchange paradigm. It's a gift. Um, imagine then you need, you know, your, your neighbour needs help babysitting or walking their dog, and you offer to do it. Take the dog for a walk, come home, it probably would feel like a really good walk. Um, and your girlfriend or your boyfriend might think you're kind of cool for doing it, for trying it. Um, there's subtle patterns in those dynamics of bonds that are created that is fundamentally community. It's a very fundamental uh, human principle, which uh, I think it's kind of a crazy paradox of the name impossible is, becomes a utopian idea nowadays when um, actually it's just natural human behaviour. The idea I had, um, incidentally, I had uh, on the way, so it wasn't a product of, but it's interesting, the context, uh, to a refugee camp on the Thai-Burmese border. And I've thought about that since, and it's really poignant, because the refugee camp that I was visiting has existed for 26 years, and the people I met there have, some of them are my age, and they've been born there, and they've never left the three-mile radius. And they don't have money, um, and they don't have many options. And there's a lot of difficulty that surrounds that scenario. Yet there was a sense of community and a sense of cooperating and working together that was incredibly, incredibly humbling and incredibly inspiring. And it's something that I feel um, we could really actually, we don't even realize, uh, value and uh, experience a lot from. So the second part of my story, I hope that's communicated a little bit of the idea. Um, is I was going to talk about my journey for last year of building it and how the idea itself has actually built the idea in many ways. Um, so I came out of university last summer and I was kind of completely foreign to kind of anybody in technology and didn't know really where to begin. I met a man who's sitting here tonight called Brian Boylan on a train after a party and was got along with him. And he said he worked for a branding company. And I went, oh, great, that sounds like that could be helpful. Um, will you help me with this idea I have? And he has, and his company have been helping ever since. Uh, I've had, I spent quite a lot of money on it, but I'd say most of my money has gone into failure and has gone into the kind of worst experiences I've had in the last year. 
Jimmy Wales, who's helping me with this platform, took a very funny picture, which I'll show you, of me shouting at my, uh, this is me having a conversation with the second attempt I had to develop it. <laughs> um, uh, they, um, so yeah, a lot of the most difficult things have come, incidentally, from the paid experiences. Um, and as a consequence of this experience, which is this summer, and I'd spent money on the second agency I was trying to do to build it, and it all had just been very difficult, and it wasn't working at all. Um, I thought, okay, I'm going to give this a third attempt, and this is going to be my last attempt, because I really believe in this idea, and if it doesn't work this time, I think I might give up. And then I met a man called Kwame, who's in this audience, um, or should be in this audience too, and uh, I hope he doesn't mind. I want to just paint that story for a minute, because I think it's a really um, clear articulation of what I'm talking about in general. Um, I met Kwame, uh, and we talked about doing a kind of cash, uh, equity, maybe partnership on this project. And then the next week, I went to Bangladesh. I was studying uh, Professor Yunus's social business model. Um, I was interested in if we can build this and if we can make it successful, can we monetize it? And then can we do really good things with that money and make a kind of macroeconomic structure that isn't paradoxical to the kind of internal gift, uh, gift economy? And um, I'd had the honor of meeting Professor Yunus. He invited me out to study his social business model, which I did for a week. And um, I was really, really, really inspired by it. And it, for me, is something that uses the power of business in an unorthodox way to potentially cause a slight paradigm shift. And um, anyway, I came back, and my fear was that anybody who'd be interested in getting involved potentially with Impossible in the project, i.e. investors, for example, would probably run a mile when I mentioned this. And um, I sat down with Kwame again one afternoon in my house, and I spent a couple of hours with talking about the whole project in general. And at the very end of the conversation, I just seeded it in. I said, oh, by the way, <laughs> incidentally, I was thinking of possibly making this a social business. And um, if that's going to damage it, I won't. But uh, I just want you to know that's kind of where my mind and heart is at right now. A week later, um, Kwame had begun building. And I said, slow down, slow down. We haven't sorted out kind of, I don't know what this relationship is yet or like how this is going to work out. And he said, you know what? I'm building it as a gift to the project. After our conversation last week, I took a long, hard look in the mirror, and I decided I want to do this as a gift to the project, in the spirit of the project. He left my apartment, and I honestly nearly cried. Um, and it wasn't the fact, there wasn't the practicalities. It wasn't the fact that now I could actually make it happen in a way that I'd been really struggling to so far. It was that I had gestured a kind of very heartfelt idea and expected that it might retaliate in the opposite way and got kind of the most amazing reaction. And in a, that's a kind of bigger example of what I'm hoping this can possibly do in a small, a small way, from individuals to individuals on a kind of peer-to-peer -peer level. And if it works, hopefully ways I will never know what's happening. I'll never know about the little gestures that individuals can make to one another um, through this platform, or hopefully even off the platform. You know, it's not about the platform, it's about the communication between people. Um, and it was a great kind of validation of vindication, uh, not vindication, validation of what I'm trying to do with this. Um, so as I guess, I just want to say how grateful I am. Um, Tom Uglu is also in this audience. He's the most brilliant mind and has contributed so much kind of conceptually to try and to work out how you would run a system like this. Um, and I want to say thank you, um, which is incidentally our only kind of currency, is saying thank you um, uh, to the people who have been involved in the last year and helped me turn what have been, what were my kind of first attempt at paper wireframes, imagining that Morgan Freeman was maybe like living nearby, <laughs> um, into what is now the app that we're building, um, which we're in the process of testing. If anybody here is involved, if interested in being involved in the testing, uh, email us, hello at impossible.com. We would love, I mean, you're an amazing group of people. I would love, love, love you to be involved and give us your feedback. Um, we're also working on the web platform and to launch it at the end of this year. Um, I'm really excited. I think it's, it's something I believe in enough that I've committed most of the last year um, to building. It might not work. I kind of have made my peace with, with it in, in those terms. Um, but I have a suspicion that there is uh, something in people that might respond to this kind of way of interacting with one another and that it could bring a huge amount of uh, social value. And, um, and I'm also really excited by the possibilities that I see social media and technology presenting. And I hope that this might be a first in lots of other things that people are coming up with of how we can use that really powerful um, mechanism and force to kind of generate change. 
I'm um, going to end slightly cheesily with a Carhill Gibran quote I like. <laughs> then said a rich man, speak to us of giving. And he answered, you give but little when you give of your possession. It is when you give of yourself that you truly give. Thank you.